Okay, uh, in terms of access control, let's uh, uh, continue on with some examples of uh, the, the various uh, principles, uh, technologies, and uh, other foundational issues that we've been talking about, and, and you know, what kind of actual tools are we talking about, are we considering? Um, yeah, uh, just as as some examples uh, in practical usance. Of course, this doesn't exhaust the range of of tools by any means. But um, well, let's start with access control software because that's you know kind of where we started. Like I said, um, you know, this is uh, these days mostly built into the operating system. We've got. Uh, control of who gets access to the system, who gets access to what files, what level of access they get, and you know, it's just typically uh, still, even these days, uh, we are signing on with passwords um, although increasingly uh, there are opportunities for uh, biometrics, uh, various uh, smartphones will uh, take a fingerprint or uh, your face as, as a biometric uh, authentication for access. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, lots of uh, systems um, are uh, requiring uh, multi-factor authentication these days. Uh, I believe I mentioned that I'm fighting with my bank who has decided that everybody has one and only one cell phone and uh, uh, are uh, demanding uh, that everybody uh, be involved with uh, two-factor authentication involving the phone and only the phone. Um, and uh, the fact that I have two cell phones uh, uh, means that I can only sign on half the time. Uh, if I'm going to go that way. Uh, no other provisions uh, for the, the access control. So, you know, they got uh, weaknesses in uh, their decision about what um, is uh, made. Interestingly, uh, you don't require multi-factor authentication if you use their app for uh, the uh, access to the bank account. But, of course, um, the... Uh, cell phone itself and the app on the cell phone is subject to SIM swapping attacks and uh, so uh, interesting that they have you know made that type of decision in terms of the access control software um, antivirus software we have uh, various and sundry uh, tools for uh, malware protection, antivirus control, um, various uh, related uh, issues there protecting our, uh, well, really the integrity of our programs uh, to make sure that they don't get infected uh, by viruses. But there's um, many other payloads, of course, that uh, computer viruses can carry and that can create uh, Issues, so of course, you know, we have uh, detection um, and even uh, corrective controls uh, for that in terms of the antivirus software. And we'll get into more details of those uh, when we uh, go into uh, application software and security and uh, uh, library control systems. Uh, we've talked about the examples of uh, backups. Um, but of course, many, many things that we uh, have to have in our libraries for our systems. Um, the original installation software for the operating system itself. Um, the various applications that we have. Our data, our data files um, of various types. And of course, you know, having uh, systems to control the access for that is yet another uh, uh, tool in in our uh, protective suite of controls. Um, passwords themselves. Now, of course, passwords 
Uh, some people are saying, you know, we still only use passwords because passwords are free. And in terms of security, you get what you pay for. And there is a lot of truth to that. But unfortunately, um, we have not yet found a good single sign-on system that will effectively uh, address the issues and uh, give us a, um, a token uh, or a biometric that can be used uh, pretty much universally. So, you know, uh, passwords are uh, sort of the, the default um, in terms of is this available for any given system? Is it, you know, you know are there uh, control systems that allow for biometrics or tokens um, in every system that we want to use? In? Unfortunately, the answer is no, and it's still yes in terms of passwords. So, uh, issues in, in that regard. Now, in terms of the tokens, we are um, getting uh, some uh, work in, in regard to uh, things like smart cards, um, and, and particularly in areas like encryption, where we can not only have a card that uh, has a, a token or a password or, or something like that, but can um, provide encryption for uh, a variety of purposes. And we can actually have smart cards that provide us with uh, uh, the basis for encryption, either uh, holding keys, creating keys, or actually doing the encryption itself. Um, and, of course, encryption is yet another one of our tools that uh, is used in a wide variety of forms um, for, uh, for access, for uh, uh, the uh, encryption of our static data, but also uh, for um, any kind of communication and, and networking that we do. Um, all of these issues are... Uh, uh, areas and, and you know examples of, of tools that we can use to control access in a variety of ways so uh, 